So from the amazing talks from Sol, I guess some of you might be interested in um, uh, the implementation of Sol, which I'll go into great detail this talk. So before the problem we are dealing with is um, uh, so we want to replace some PGMs, which are a critical uh, material. And uh, for example, platinum is uh, used heavily in uh, industry in Europe for uh, vehicle exhaust control. And so it's used for like, hydrogen fuel cells in the future, clean energy technologies. But it's really expensive. And uh, it's estimated to, at least platinum is estimated to run out in 15 years. So uh, the Crypt Gap project is a EU based project which um, uh, plans to or tries to um, eliminate this or at least um, decrease the amount of platinum or PGMs we use by uh, finding um, or uh, uh, parameterizing our own clusters, maybe bimetallic or ternary clusters. It's a theoretically uh, German project and it's um, based on DFT and machine learning. And uh, where what would be amazing is, is if we can just um, tell the computer to uh, design a catalyst and then it just spits out the uh, structure, which is basically an artificial enzyme, I would say. But uh, this is in the uh, 23rd century, so it would be almost simple. simple. And uh, for the first trial, we would um, try to predict the absorption energy of the hydrogen for the hydrogen evolution reaction. <coughs> And this could be a neural network or anything. Also, we can just um, uh, input just a plain XYZ if we had a huge neural network with infinite amount of computation time. But I guess it does, hasn't happened yet too. So um, we have to split the uh, process into two, which is a pre-processing to eliminate all the symmetries, basically, so that it doesn't do have redundant information for the machine learning predictor, for example, neural network or conurbate regression, to be able to predict the uh, absorption energy or surface hydrogen energy. And for a good predictor, or ideal predictor, would be invariant under rotation, translation, commutation, unique, non-degenerate, and uh, basically um, continuous in the feature space. <coughs> So we can categorize some um, descriptors in first to non-spatial spatial. So non-spatial is, for example, by bonds, atom mass, or RNA sequence. Whereas in spatial is what if the um, uh, physical quantity we want to um, learn has, has to do heavily with the spatial configuration, then we need to use a spatial descriptor. And also, a spatial descriptor can be categorized into global and local, naturally. But we can also use tricks to make um, a global descriptor local and a local de a descriptor global. Like for example, using the kernel trick for so or using MBTO for only one point about that. So we initially tried to develop a, um, a global descriptor that was um, originally uh, based on an image recognition uh, algorithm, but we tried to uh, make it into 3D, but we ended up finding out that it's actually basically um, soap in Fourier space later on. So, but this gives a um, very good uh, idea of how the um, getting rid of the symmetries work. So, initially we have an XYZ structure. Then we can, for example, use the Gaussian smear, which basically eliminates the permutational invariance. And then uh, we can use a um, we use Fourier transform and take the absolute value, which would uh, get rid of the translation symmetry. Then we do a coordinate transform into C dead pi, which looks something like this for a, um, a gold cloud cluster. And then we integrate this over a spherical harmonics, <coughs> something like this. In this case, it's delta equals ten or something. I can't remember exactly. <coughs> but we have to integrate over all. L's, M's, and uh, different um, uh, spheres. And then finally, we get the coefficients, which is basically the blueprint of the um, system. 
So we tried this on the uh, GDP 134K organic data set, which actually learned pretty well, but not as good as the uh, state-of-the-art descriptors. And the problem is that it's really heavy. For example, we have to um, integrate over basically this. So that it's much harder to parameterize. So we um, uh, gave up or put, put this project as a whole. And switch to salt. So it's a very similar procedure. First, we take the gas fan smearing for each atom. <coughs> and then we integrate it over the um, spherical harmonics with a basis function, which basis function could be anything more than normal. But and then if we take, for example, if we get this power spectrum, which is invariant under rotation and permutation in this case, but we want to keep the um, look, uh, Point. Uh, so we want to, we don't want to make the point invariant under translation, just so that we can get a local chemical environment. So then, if we take two power spectrums and take the difference, we can get a dis distance measure of the. chemical environment for these cases. So I'm going to make things here so we use this basis function which is basically it's the same basis function as um, most of the Gaussian uh, like like DFT or chemical quantum chemical packages used. So you can actually just import um, these numbers beta, which you can spit out, for example, in cp 2 really. And then we can integrate this uh, easily uh, analytically, which gives, for example, for L equals 0, we get this expression for um, the power spectrum, which is quite easy to compute. And the basis function looks come like this, with the, um, in this case, L should be constant. Oh, sorry, the spherical harmonics constant. And then if we take the different measure, and we can find, for example, the unique uh, uh, surface atoms by elim in eliminating any um, local chemical environment for each atom that, that are dissimilar, and then just keep the unique ones, which we get exactly what we would expect from uh, intuition to, in this case. But for like a gold copper cluster looking like this, we probably won't be able to figure out which surface atoms we need intuitively. So so would be good for this kind of systems to figure out which um, surface atoms you need. Also, we can um, guess the absorption site by first initially saying that it could be on a bridge site, and then map out all the bridge sites on the M1 steel, for example, and then take the uh, elimination by a unique soap. And we only have a couple that we need to calculate with um, GFT, so we can eliminate a whole bunch of GFT calculations. We also could um, bypass actually doing a geometrical uh, optimization by training the um, soap with a kernel rate regression on initially guessing the uh, absorption site, and then let it relax, and then let it train from the guess, initial guess to the Relax point. So that once we train it, we can just guess where the absorption energy, uh, absorption site would be. And then we just uh, 
basically give the soap spectra and then use KRR to give what the absorption energy would be, even though it's not relaxed. So we can use the salt similarity to um, uh, study the, for example, how different the cluster is from the bulk structure, from taking the differences of the bulk structure. And the white means um, similar, the chemical is similar to the actual real bulk structure, whereas in red means it's uh, quite different. So we can also study how maybe the physical quantities might change depending on the uh, local chemical environment. Also, we just recently, in the past week or so, tested against another soap. And um, we benchmarked on with a, a, a Rosen quick gap package with our <coughs> soap and second earth with a KR. And uh, confusingly, we got uh, quite different results. So the red is the close and quick gap, whereas the blue is our results. And for example, for the M H two with n equals two, the accuracy is already converged with the mean average error of um, scan of a potential scan of the hydrogen around the cluster. And these are potential scans around many clusters to learn on different local chemical environments. And if I had to guess, it's probably because we use a different um, uh, basis function. And our basis function depends on the L which gives some, um, which gives probably a more broad uh, a spread of the basic function throughout the space. So that we, in this case, might not need so many um, number of radio basis functions. So that two might suffice for this. But for other cases, uh, for gold, gold copper, for example, we needed at least many states. For the single one, and the um, yeah, about six for multi. Whereas in MOS2, just maybe four or five uh, for many MOS2 chemical local environment potential scans. So, so performs very well due to their um, optimized parameters and its locality for the hydrogen. For the salt, um, surface hydrogen energies, and so can be used for local environments. And knowing the exact location of an absorbent, we can bypass the, um, or I guess we can bypass the actual chemical, uh, the uh, geometrical optimization. And uh, we have a fast and light salt implementation that uh, we showed in, in the um, benchmark. And it's available on GitHub. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? No. So I will start. Uh, can you get this line with the comparison of the soaps? Um, so this is the number of radial basis function in your descriptor, which basically would make the descriptor more and more large and Yes, for example, in this complete. case it's 36 numbers, or if you get rid of the symmetry, it's 21 numbers there, and equals to this. Whereas in, if it's 12, it goes up to a couple hundred, or 500 or so. Okay. Yeah. So you would expect to get a, a better and better accuracy the more of these you put, but you can notice sometimes here the line seems to go up. Yes. It's very imperceptible line on this projector, but it, it seems that yeah, you, you add something to your descriptor, but your accuracy goes down, so it, the error increases. So do you, do you know why? I know we haven't figured out. I, I was wondering if uh, it gives too much information or redundant information if we just keep adding uh, numbers of this, uh, descriptors. Okay. Is, is it uh, significant? No, no, it's very. Good. It's, it's, it's a small. It's very small. Probably it could be. More questions? Yeah. Uh, 
How does SOAP account for uh, differences in atomic size when it has to work with the binary compounds? Oh, um, I don't know if it was a specific slide, but uh, does your implementation of SOAP account for differences in atom types in the local environment or just the geometric? I, it also accounts for different types too. Uh, how okay. does that work? Uh, so we split the. Um, uh, I, I sorry, I forgot to write this, but we split the power spectrum into different types. Okay, so you've got one power spectrum for AB, one for AA, and these are different atom types? Yes, I, I guess in this case we split the C one type and the C another type. And if we want to cross over, we can also have the same types and different types. That makes sense, thank you. Uh, so, uh, regarding where you have a slide where you compare the differences uh, between uh, SOAP, given SOAP and you have different structure, and then your SAP and different structures. Ah, uh, no, so SAP, the accuracy actually is not. No, no, no is that's it's fine. fine. I mean, uh, that one, yes, you passed it. Uh, now I don't know where it is. Uh, yeah, this one. Huh? Okay, so when you take the difference, uh, like, is that bounded by something? Is that be a normalization constant or like how know. you can compare this because there's just a difference of the vectors I don't see why it should be a measure of anything in, in general. Well, so, it, yeah. for, if you just take the difference once I guess it makes no sense but if you take difference for different uh, for example okay, virus, then we can see that it different uh, increasing number for example from here to here. So it has I don't think it has a physical meaning. Okay. But at least we know that the chemical environment is different. More different from this one to this one. To this one. Okay. More questions? If not, then let's thank the speaker again.